Come on, goats! And dogs! <laughs> Welcome to the breeding season of 2023. And we are excited because we've got a lot of does that we're gonna breed and a lot of exciting pairings that we're gonna make. No, Luna is not gonna be bred even though she always wants to be. Luna hasn't been bred for like three years, but she never fails to come over to the Bucks when she's in heat. Luna. The juniors have been growing nice and big and we're excited to start breeding the new batch this year as well because, you know, new genetics. We always get excited about that. So after much consideration, here are the final breeding plans of 2023. We were young and we were free and running. Never bothered about what could be coming Every day we danced and life was smiling We were young and drunk in love All right guys, welcome to this year's breeding plans. Now we have three senior does. Senior does means does that have already been bred in the past. And then we have four junior does who have never been bred. Then we also have two bucks to choose from. Now three of our junior does are actually Finnick daughters. So they cannot be bred back to Finnick. That would just be too closely related. So for them, we'll be using our Lancelot. So because I used Zorro for Reba last year, this year I have decided to use Finnick. I would really like to see how their genetics combine. You know, some don't combine very well, but Finnick really improved a lot of things for our does last year. So I'm excited to see what he does with Reba. So that leaves Daphne, Prim, and Little River. Last year I used Finnick with Daphne. That's how we got Shania and Winona. And while I absolutely love how he improved Daphne's front assembly and top line, rump length, and rear leg angulation, I'd like to see what Lancelot does with Daphne. I'm just curious. So we're going to put Lancelot with Daphne for this year, and we'll see how they do. And really the same goes with Prim. I used Finnick last year with her, so I'm just curious. I would like to see what Lancelot does with Prim. And finally, we have Little River. She was a tricky one for me. For a second, I considered bringing in an outside buck, maybe renting one. I was thinking if I could find one with long lines of well-attached udders, I could maybe secure that trait and keep a buck out of them. I had all these plans. But then I decided I think I want to keep things more simple this year and really utilize the genetics of the bucks that I have because they are both so great. And so even though I don't really know what kind of udder finnick pushes through in his genetics because his daughters haven't freshened or haven't developed an udder yet. I'm going to go ahead and use Finnick with River. So that's it. A lot of spots. <laughs> There's a lot of spotty bucks right now. Now when we get to the actual breeding plans, I'm going to go over what I'm hoping to improve genetics wise with each individual pairing. But for now, this is the basic plan and we're sticking to it. Genetics are really interesting. Some really work well, some don't. So this is my educated guess on what I think is going to work the best. And will we be using the same methods we used last year to get more kids and more dolings? Uh, kind of. So we're definitely going to do the doling method where we breed early on in the cycle to try to encourage the moment that those sperm reach the egg. You can pause if you want to read how it all works. But as far as flushing goes to increase more kids, I'm going to be more selective about this. So I'm going to do this to the juniors because first timers can typically have just one single kid. And as you guys know, we like to avoid that as much as possible because it eliminates a lot of problems down the road. But for does like Daphne, who had five last year, yeah, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're not going to try to encourage her to have a lot of kids. I just want an average number of kids. I think that would be just fine. Hold on. <laughs> okay, put her right there. Let's see how much she weighs. Oh, yeah, she's pretty light. 37. Pretty little girl.
But before we start breeding the juniors, we have to weigh them and measure their rumps to make sure that they hit the weight and the width requirements. For this miniature breed, a junior doling must be at least 45 pounds and have a rump width of at least 4.5 inches before they should be bred. So we weighed and measured them all and this is how they all turned out. She's so long. Hey, yeah, she's like 10 pounds heavier. Wow. Honey's coming in as the biggest at 55 pounds and a rump width of five inches. So she's definitely safe to be bred. Winona was 46 pounds, a rump width of 4.5 inches. Shania was almost the same at 45 pounds and just shy of 4.5 inches. So she should be fine. And Little River, who is only a month younger, but tends to come from a slow growing line, came in at 37 pounds and a rump width of four inches. So we're gonna have to watch her and possibly wait to breed her next year. But we've got some time, so we'll wait and see what happens. Tatum and Lola still haven't left yet. They're, uh, they're gonna leave soon in the next few weeks, but they haven't quite left yet. So we have a lot of goats here still. So that's why you kind of will see them in the videos for the next few weeks. These boys are excited for breeding. Although he's still pretty small. Kevin, you think he's gonna? He's pretty small compared to Finnick. Oh, River's Let's already see. He's bigger than Finnick. a little interested. Bigger than River. Who's that? Ooh, potential potential boyfriend there. I think he'll do fine. He just it might be a bit of a <laughs> bit of a reach for the bigger does. Yeah. Well, one thing's for sure, it's getting smelly over here. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we're hitting rut, which means they get really smelly. Rut is breeding season, basically. That's when the bucks go crazy, get smelly, pee on themselves, and get all, you know, spruced up for the girls. And then all you need are the girls to be ready for the breeding to happen. Well, we're back from our three week vacation and it's been nice because we've got to spend time with family and kind of just deal with the heat wave that I know everybody's going through right now. But now we're back, it's August. It's gonna be the start of monsoon season here, which means lots of storms and rain and humidity, yay. And a lot of this buzzing. You're gonna hear a lot of buzzing. So that's gonna be fun. <laughs> I hate the cicadas. It's so hard to edit out of the videos. So, um, yeah, and they get louder the more that you talk. The longer that we talk out here, it's gonna get really loud probably in like 10 minutes. Can you hear that? They're getting louder right now. Yeah, because we're talking now. It's like each decibel. Listen, do you hear that? Mm -hmm. That's louder. Oh yeah. Louder, louder. Hey, back up, back up. Sit. That's <laughs> not a sit. Salem knows how to sit. Come on, Salem. Salem. Sit. Sit, good girl. So we thought we'd share with you guys how we can tell the difference between the two. It's been sort of difficult. Initially, we could tell because Casper was littler, but now he's real big and he's about the same size. Then we thought maybe we should groom them and have like him have a mohawk, but the mohawk thing didn't really turn out. <laughs> I forgot to tell the groomer. So now, well, we do have the collars. We've got a red collar and we've got a purple collar, huh, Salem? Hey, come over here and see the camera. Come here. We didn't ever really find the purple collar. We had to buy another one because Casper buried it somewhere. He buried it, he took it, and he never gave it back. So Casper's in the red, Salem's in the purple. And the, the way though we figured it out, the way we can tell them apart, Lydia, is that Casper has a lot more energy than Salem. <laughs> yeah. He's just a lot more crazy, and he's got a little bit longer tail, so that's a little bit different, but basically Salem's a sweetie pie, and he's a little bit nuts, but we still like him. He's a good boy. I've got a bone, I'm holding a bone up, that's why he's barking, sit. Well, that's not right. good job, Salem. They slip on the floor, so they eventually go into a down. Okay, you guys can have it, you can fight over it. Good luck. Salem doesn't even care. No, she's sweet. 
aren't you? You're a sweetie. We don't cut our dogs like typical giant schnauzers because the cut has all this fur underneath and that gets so disgusting, messy when they get in the pond, when they play in the irrigation. So we have to have them trimmed <laughs> shorter than that so that the mess doesn't come into our house so much. But they don't really look like typical schnauzers, but they're schnauzers. <laughs> I love that one. Stop laughing. No, it's good. I love it. You're All laughing right, guys. at my stuff. Lydia has been working really hard to crochet. No. <laughs> Lydia's been crocheting all summer and just for fun. And look what she did, guys. This is this took her forever. It took it her took like all forever. summer. Put it on. Show them how it looks. But I did my hair. No, it's where you have to do it. Do it for the video. To. I don't want to. Hey. Put it on the doggy. That's so cute. I love it. And that's from the um, Spider-Verse. That's cool. And then she made all these little animals, like a spider. <laughs> what is you it? I thought that was something else. I know. I even guess that's it. a spider. This is a little squid guy from the Mario movie, right? Kind it's of? a ghost, but It's close. a ghost. Okay, right. Whatever. This is a Minecraft guy. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Oh, it's from Among Us. Yes. There you go. Nice. Just can't give them to the dogs or else Casper they... Casper really wants to get it. Sit. Be gentle, just smell. Just smell. Hey. <laughs> They're always like... <laughs> I'm just gonna gently bite this. Not for you, you rip it apart, huh? All you have to do is you just have to make these and then you can sell them. And it'll only cost like a thousand dollars each one because it takes yeah. you so long. I make like one per month. I'm the worst. Two a.m. in the car, playing my favorite song. All right, guys, we are going to make homemade pizza tonight. We're gonna do it in a really fun way because last year I made like the best pizza I've ever had and we're gonna try to recreate it. So we have fresh figs on the fig tree. They actually haven't done as well this year because we haven't had as much rain. And so they like to have that humidity to really fruit. But we've got, we've got a little batch of it. So we're going to make fig caramelized onion with basil and, and a white sauce. So. It's gonna be amazing. I've made plenty of dough. I have to always make extra in case Kevin ever dumps the pizza on the ashes again. So we're laughing at Kevin because he accidentally flipped the pizza over oh, <laughs> into the fire. Funny. Dropped it in the fire. <laughs> so. Got a little burned it. It's chicken food tonight. So when you're in the oven, don't dump it right on the fire. Yeah, T tip from us. Look, it's like Napoleon Dynamite. Watch. Come eat your dinner. It's gonna like, watch. <laughs> <laughs> it went far. Good job. You win the pizza throw. And I've got the standard pepperoni going, so we can use that as well. But uh, let's get going. We've got stuff to make and people to feed. As always, guys, we start with the onion. Now, the trick to making really good caramelized onions is that you have to use two different fats usually. So I've got olive oil and a little pat of butter here that will keep the temperature even and keep it from reaching a smoke point because we gotta cook these low and slow. It's gonna take a good 20 minutes and we gotta settle in. I always like to add a little bit of salt. You gotta get those onions to start sweating. That's what's gonna make them release all of that liquid and then reduce that liquid down so it becomes sort of sweet and caramelized. And it just takes a lot of stirring and a lot of patience, but eventually we get to this beautiful, rich caramel color, and that's exactly what we want. Next, we're gonna make sort of a bechamel sauce, or I guess you could call it an Alfredo sauce. Really, we need a white sauce for the pizza because I'm not gonna use a red for my fig pizza. This is, we're going a different level, guys. This is fancy. So we'll start with two tablespoons of butter, two tablespoons of flour, that makes a roux, and we want that to cook a little bit before we add the liquid. So we'll get that a little bit browned, then we'll measure out a little over a cup of goat's milk and pour that in. 
All right, so now we've basically got our sauce, but we need to add more to, you know, zhuzh it up a bit. So we'll add about a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and that will make it even thicker and give it that amazing flavor, of course. Then we'll add some garlic powder and a little bit of salt and pepper. And that sauce is so good. <laughs> it's perfect for this white sauce on our pizza. We'll give the figs a quick slice and then start rolling out the dough. Now we've used all sorts of different types of flour and cornmeal to make our pizza not stick. It doesn't stick to the pizza stone floor, it just sticks to our pans. And so the best way that I found is just douse it in flour. <laughs> That's the best way we can get it to not stick. It seems to be way a way better option than cornmeal. And then we're ready to top. We've got everything you need here. Sauteed onions, a bechamel sauce, some figs, marinara sauce, balsamic glaze, pepperoni, prosciutto, basil, and mozzarella. Mozzarella. And Lydia is doing the dough. For the best pizza of your life, this is how you top it. We'll start with the white sauce, a good handful of mozzarella, the sliced figs, some prosciutto, and of course the caramelized onions. Now we're not done yet. This is how it's gonna bake, but we still have more to add on top. This pizza oven cooks so fast. In about five minutes, we've got this beauty, to which I'll add fresh basil and a good drizzle of balsamic glaze. Oh my goodness, this is so good. <laughs> this is such a good pizza. And of course, we made some classic pepperoni for all the picky eaters in the family. If you want my pizza dough recipe, I'll put it in the description below, and you can watch our video on how to make a pizza oven out of a doghouse. It's a Kevin's craft. All right, guys, thanks for joining us in today's video. We're glad to be back. It's a busy time. We've got breeding season. We're waiting for some dough to go into heat. It's anybody's guess who's going to be first. And at the end of this month, we're going to take both kids to college. So, yeah, we'll see you next week.